Hi, I'm Bill Labaris. I'm the Senior Editorial Director at IDG's Custom Solutions Group, and I'm joined here today by Tom Riley, who is Vice President and General Manager of HP Enterprise Security, and by Bob Gorley, who's the Master Blogger at CTO Vision, Inc. Bob, Tom, thank you very much for joining me today. Hello, Master thank Blogger. You. All right, it's good to be here. All right. So I uh, want to talk to you both about some data that we saw recently from a couple of uh, HP Commission studies, one from the Panaman Institute and one from uh, Coleman Parks. And uh, Tom, first you, uh, here's some information, some findings we got from the Panaman Institute study. Uh, it's called the Cybercrime Study. Uh, the median cost of a cybercrime in the group that was studied and surveyed, 5.9 million a year, 56% increase over previous year. The average time to resolve an attack, 18 days. The average cost of resolving the attack, $416,000, a 70% increase over last year. What do you make of data like that? Well, you know what's interesting? When you do these reports year to year, and we've commissioned them, is to look at the trends that occur over the years. So the numbers are big in and of themselves, and they were big last year, they're big this year. But what's interesting is the year-over-year -year increase, right? A 56% increase in the amount of money companies are spending each year on cybercrime response or 70% increase in the cost to respond to a single incident. What that tells me is, one, there's more cyber, cyber crime happening and more breaches occurring in these enterprises. Two, they're more sophisticated because it's taking longer to respond to them and resolve them, which is ex more expensive. And we have limited resources to deploy against these things. So something has changed in the last year, and I think it's more sophisticated attacks, but also, We've done some innovation around cloud computing and mobility, which introduces new surface vectors for new types of attacks, and that's why we're seeing a rise in number of attacks. Mm -hmm. Scary thought, because you're saying take more IT resources, those are scarce enough to begin with. Bob Gorley, any response here? Yeah, so it's been kind of a truism in our industry that the, uh, the security folks are always trying to justify their budget, um, and you find out too late that it's very costly to remediate a security issue. With data like this, I think it helps build a compelling case that if you invest in security, you can be saving your enterprise money because you're preventing this kind of intrusion that costs a lot to clean up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the other thing is justifying budgets is the Wall Street Journal. I mean, in the past year, the number of breaches that have made it to the cover of the Wall Street Journal and the impact on brands, I'm seeing that now cyber crime and cyber security is a topic at the C-level executive suite. Mm -hmm. yeah. And about time, too. Um, the Coleman Parks uh, research, and uh, HP um, uh, participated in the, both of these studies, um, one of the key findings was financial risk was cited as the most critical uh, type of risk management, and executives at these companies uh, only 29% of them said they have confidence in their organization's uh, security management practices, meaning 70% didn't. What does that tell you? Well, I think that 29% that said they have confidence probably don't know that they have already been intruded upon in a very significant exactly. way. Um, the folks that have been humbled by big attacks realize that you need to continually uh, keep enhancing your security, um, and they probably have a little bit less confidence. So um, that's one idea on what those numbers could mean. Yeah, I, mean, I, I love that report because basically what it says is no one really understands how secure they are or how unsecure or insecure they are. The fact of the matter is most corporations can't measure the effectiveness of their security programs. And if you ask a chief security officer, is our corporation secure? That's a hard question to answer. The fact of the matter is no company is 100% secure. So you have to assume breach. You have to start by assuming that your security controls have been breached. And then that's a scary assumption because then your job becomes, well, I need to figure out where we've been breached. So with these data, again, which I think you accurately state, they really are scary. What do they ultimately suggest for CIOs and CISOs? What, what do they need to be doing differently? How do they, what kind of different thinking do they need to bring to the table here? Well, this is where I think HP is doing some innovative work. And not just in technology, but in the approach to securing enterprises. The old design goal used to be striving for 100% security. Today we believe that's no longer achievable, especially if you take advantage of cloud computing and mobility. Inherently that brings risk. And so we think you need to take a risk-based approach. Understand where your most critical assets are, your, your sensitive data, and protect that very, very well realizing that you may be exposing yourself in other areas to vulnerabilities. But you need to know where your greatest vulnerabilities are, and we call this a risk management approach. And with that, then, you couple it to what Bob said earlier. If you assume that you have been breached, 
Then you need the intelligence, we call it security intelligence, to understand where you've been breached, to understand how to respond quickly, isolate and quarantine and protect your environment. Great. Well, Bob Gorley, Tom Riley, thank you both very much for joining me today. Great information. Thank you. Great to be here. And I'm Bill Labaris from IDG saying thank you for joining me as well.